Hello, welcome to Learn ADS in five minutes. This is tutorial 15, and in this tutorial, we'll talk about how to do multi dimensional data processing in ADS. Recall in the last tutorial video, we ran a three dimensional um, you know, parameter sweep and we ended up with very complex data such as this. Now we need to figure out how to understand this. So before we go in, let me explain something very basic so that you can easily understand the concept. So let me disable both of these parameter sweep and when we run simulation, we get a very simple curve which we are very familiar in seeing. Now this data already exhibits X versus Y kind of plot. That means it's already an array. Now, if you want to find out what exactly is the array size on what parameter is my S21 is dependent, that can be very simply done. Uh, whenever you are in this uh, graph inserting mode and you select the measurement for which you need information, you click on variable info and it tells you S21 is dependent on frequency and the array size is 101. This the square bracket you know, signifies and the type of uh, data is complex. Now the same information uh, when we deal with um, you know more complex data processing, it's it's much more comfortable if we have that information live on the data display, and that we could do by insert a very simple table and drag it to the size we want, and once we add S21 on that instead of directly plotting and clicking OK, I will double click on this S21 and instead of using trace expression S21, I would put it under what braces. So what function tells us exactly the characteristics of the measurement which we are talking about. So here we can see S21 is dependent on frequency. It has 101 points and the type is complex. Now this information we can use to do you know, any kind of data processing here. Now let's go back to schematic and let's enable these two parameter sweep blocks we have and then let's go ahead and run simulation. Now with this simulation, we can see S21 is now dependent on three dimensions. So it's dependent on my C, my L, and frequency. My C being the outermost variable and frequency being the innermost variable. Whatever is the innermost variable, you would see that on X axis. Now from this bunch of data, we could filter out the data we are looking at now, okay? So let's see how. So if we do a simple click on Y axis, this makes that field editable. Now we can put a curly braces and we can extract the information which we are looking at using the order which we have here. For example, if I put zero, because array always starts from zero, zero, and colon, colon, which is the wildcard, means I need the entire array size. So zeroth you know, value of my C, zeroth index value of my L and the entire frequency content. So once we do that, we simply get one trace plot as we would, we would expect. Now, if we need to change, we can go ahead and change it to first index and we start to see various value graphs coming up. But in the context of overall results, if we want to you know, position our trace or plot where we are in terms of overall variation in the circuit response, we could double click on the graph again and let's insert S21 and DB on the same graph. But now our filtered graph is hidden somewhere behind the scene. To make it more apparent, we can double click on these new group of plot and we can go ahead and reduce the thickness of those and also change the color to be something like a like a grayish line. And instead of solid line, let's use dot dot. Okay. Now once we do that, now we can very clearly see where is graph referring to in the overall scheme of things. Now, if we start manipulating this array indexes to let's say something like 10, we can very clearly see where we are, what response we are getting. So this technique is very useful and, and it's a good place to start with by manipulating these array location or array indexes and see how the response change with respect to those. However, in real life, you really want to see a little more because array index doesn't tell you exactly what value of L is being used in order to show the graph at that location or what value of C uh, is used. So those things can be enabled by inserting sliders and with the slider when we move, actually we can see the value of C and L 
and we can position the slider to a specific value of these value combinations to look at the response and overall scale of things that we will cover in our next video thanks for watching and hope you like this multi-data processing in ads thanks for watching